So, hi everyone, haven't talked to you for a long time. I will start with the very interesting thing that I have found out on the internet. Uh, there is a bitch, a uh, bitch, who um, took my ideas, uh, like me uh, sitting in front of the mirror, um, doing makeup on my face, using brushes, things like that, um, applying makeup on my skin, I mean. I suspect she lives somewhere in Europe and started talking something about Lukashenko. You know, like those uh, government in exile, uh, they are called government in exile, uh, oppositionists who speak against uh, the president. So, um, this bitch is much younger than me, maybe 12 years younger, I don't know, wears a blue dress. So, this is what I want to tell her. Just snap out of it, bitch, because these are not my values, this is not what I was talking about. But she's copying me, and it just, it, it made me, uh, it blew my mind, literally. Um, I don't remember her name. It's a uh, commercial on the YouTube, before you start watching a video, um, she pops up. Or she also sits somewhere in the garden, talking some shit. I, I just, uh, I just, yeah, it's not me. So that you know it's not me and she took my ideas. I'm so surprised that um, those people have no understanding of politics at all, what politics is, what uh, the right uh, movement uh, is all about, the movement of the right parties. They think they are in the right lane but they are not delusionists, um, people call them. I call them too, delusionists. We'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. I will make tea for myself. So uh, where we stopped? Um, national nationalism and nationalistic ideas. Uh, the nationalistic ideas in Europe are completely different from the delusional nationalistic idea of uh, um, the so-called Belarusians who belongs to the party, the government in exile, which I do not support. That's why, that's why that bitch irritated me so much. Um, yeah, but no more talking about her. Um, I wanted to make it clear that I'm not at the beginning of my way and if you motherfuckers and bitches uh, looked into my bank account and uh, you felt so much pity for me because I have so little money, then you should know why my money is on, on your bank account because you took it from me. That's the main difference. I also don't... I uh, don't want to have anything in common with that bitch who constantly was blocking me from my husband or from any uh, employment opportunities thinking if I unblock her she will get more than I have now because she identifies her wealth with me being in exile. I realize I know that I influenced a lot of people all over the world with my crazy story, which is crazy because I endured it all, and um, but it, it is completely real. It is very, very much real. Little do all those people know that my main opposition has always been my mother-in-law, a very rich, very, very rich woman. Um, a woman who has her morals only on the surf surface. Only on the surface. And the battle that I have been having with my mother-in-law has been going on for 11 years. 11 years. She has to step off her tr throne so that I could sit on it and rule the family corn. 
rule over the family corn. Um, I said to the police, the Austrian police, that I haven't learned anything. Oh, I did. I did learn a couple of things, and I will tell you what, what they are. Um, I'm not afraid to speak up my mind, and I have uh, learned to identify women who I call big vagina. You will recognize this woman. She has long blonde hair or long dark hair, but she maneuvers through life by seduction and sweet voice and sweet talks and uh, behind your back she will and behind your back she will selfishly gossip or organize something against you talk about you badly spread rumors will spread rumors this is a woman who I call a big vagina uh, such women are never my friends I also remember I, I've been preparing I was preparing for a trip to Istanbul to visit my husband and those bitches were laughing just because they thought oh she wants to fly she wants to fly so there are a number of vaginas <laughs> She wants to fly, she wants to be like us. No, no bitches. I've been flying, take, I've been flying uh, before you were born because you're younger than me. And even if you're older than me, that means you have nothing in your heads and you cannot use your brain properly. I'm drinking, I'm drinking a beverage you cannot call it wine, uh, probably you can call it something similar to Sturm, which, which means young uh, wine, Sturm, uh, in German it's called Sturm. Th this is young wine, maybe it's still early for the young wine. We don't have no more grapes, as you can see, no more grapes. I, I proudly cleaned uh, the whole vineyard and cut uh, the young branches and prepared everything for the winter, as you can see. So I asked my mother not to add uh, more sugar um, because I wanted to be dry, and it, it's very much, uh, very much dry. Although it's not yet uh, saturated, it's not yet ripe, it's not yet real wine. But we're going there, in this direction. Yes, and I'm drinking coffee. I wanted to talk about a uh, narcissistic abuser. I'm not sure where he is in... Uh, um, maybe he's in the Belarusian police, maybe police. Maybe he's in KGB, who has his eyes on me. A very much obsessed uh, narcissistic piece of shit um, I heard in my head as you know I can hear voices I heard in my head that uh, he said to the main general that I um, am a threat to the um, cooperation between countries when when I see this motherfucker piece of shit in front of me forget uh, about protecting him because I will beat him to his death until he dies because thanks to me you have peace between uh, the European countries Russia and uh, Europe, Belarus and Europe thanks to me, never forget it yeah yeah, and one more thing <coughs> Jealousy between police officers and Geheimdienst and secret services happen when uh, they get offended that some other secret service uh, was first or showed their hand first or showed their intelligence first and so they feel offended and try to um, catch up 
um, using me. And this will never happen. This will never happen. Because my idea is to continue uniting countries and stand for peace and cooperation. That's why I'm so interested in a right party movement. A right party movement where there is no uh, place for the oppositional party uh, that it belongs to the government in exile. A right party movement is the party of Chega in Portugal, um, FPÖ in Austria, Viktor Orban, don't know what his party is, how his party is called. Uh, I know a little about Italy and uh, Spain, but I think I, I mentioned three main, of course, AfD in Germany, <laughs> which some people call Nazi Nazis, but I believe that there are more Nazis in uh, in the Streme Skerda, which means uh, extremist link link uh, extremist link link no link this is in German left lefties in the lefties that's what I believe and I think I'm 100% right because I'm super intelligent uh, where my intelligence come from education you stupid assholes education education I'm educated that's the main difference between me and my abusers I'm educated. Yeah, um, actually there are a couple of things, a couple of more things that I wanted to say. I still wait for my husband, uh, Stefan Kuhn, who should be here just any minute, any minute. He will, he will come here any minute, he will be here any minute. Um, and... Uh, oh, yes, uh, Gerhard Schröder. Uh, with with whom uh, Roger Keppel had a meeting, conference, Gerhard Schröder and Roger Keppel. If you watched this uh, um, conference, very interesting. But, yeah, very interesting. I sent the invitation link to my husband, but I believe uh, some of the bitches blocked this email for whatever reason, they just don't want me to connect with him. And uh, I wish my husband was there, had been there, because it's kind of his values and because his father is uh, of the same age, a little bit younger than Gerhard Schröder. Uh, maybe they even know each other. And maybe my husband know, knows Gerhard Schröder personally. Uh, I never asked him about it. So, um, something that uh, doesn't uh, leave my mind in peace, uh, what Gerhard Schröder said, he said that uh, it, Putin made a mistake. Of course he made a mistake. He cannot admit that he made a mistake. Although he, Gerhard Schröder admits that Russia is winning, he said Putin made a mistake. And I thought, why would he, he, a friend and a um, former colleague of Vladimir Putin would say such a thing? Because why would he, why would he even have this idea? And then I understood, although people, um, many people reject my point of view, if you live in Western Europe, you would have the same opinion as Gerhard Schröder. I will tell you why. Um, there is a lot of mirroring, mirror, mirroring, parties mirror each other. So this idea that someone made a mistake is hanging in the luft, in the air, is hanging in the air. Someone made a mistake. Whose mistake was it? And people always have an intuition, so they feel this idea hanging in the luft, in the luft, in the air. So they, they are thinking, mistake, 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 mistake. Whose mistake was this? Of course, Vladimir Putin made Putin's mistake, which was not. So it was the mistake of the Western countries. It was the mistake of the European, European Westerners. 
uh, of the Europeans to start a war against Russia and to support Ukraine. It was the mistake. Mistake. There is this notion of the mistake hanging in the air, but it was not of Vladimir Putin's. So uh, we cannot say that Gerhard Schröder does not understand what he is talking about. He's probably mistaken, because he grasped this idea from the air and said it must have been Vladimir Putin's because. He also cannot say that they were wrong, like we were wrong, although he could. That's very strange. That's very strange. I personally have a very um, negative experience with the Ukrainians. When the war started, um, I don't like their behavior. Like they. Um, as my tarot readers say, they are also very uh, intuitive. They know that they will be accepted both by Russians and by Westerners. They know. And they play their hand, so they use it to their advantage. They are accepted both by Russians and by Westerners. And they use it to their advantage. You understand? Because they are not enemies to anyone, Ukrainians who live in the, Europe, in the European Union, in Europe. They are not enemies to anyone. They use both Russians and Westerners. You know, they kind of um, play both, both sides. Play both sides. And that's, I don't like. I don't like it. I will tell you directly, I don't like it. That's all. Thank you for watching. I will continue drinking my wine and will edit this video. Probably will do some more because I look good on camera and my thoughts are very uh, contribute to the general idea of um, um, of the movement, probably right party movements or just movement of the intellectuals. Uh, have a nice, have a nice, nice. Weekend. Goodbye.